In this video, we will continue our journey through the lower respiratory tract. Continue to imagine the way air is moving through these tubes as we go deeper and deeper into the lung tissue. After the air leaves the pharynx and passes through the glottis, it makes its way through the larynx. The larynx is composed of a lot of cartilage, ligaments, and skeletal muscle. The largest of the cartilages is referred to as the thyroid cartilage, which forms most of the anterior and lateral walls of the larynx and maintains the opening of the airway. Additionally, we can see the laryngeal prominence from this cartilage, which is commonly referred to as the Adam's apple. The cricoid cartilage is inferior to the thyroid cartilage and forms a complete circle. Cartilage serves an important function throughout the lower respiratory tract because it keeps the airway open to ensure the efficient movement of air into and out of the lungs. Another important structure to mention in the larynx would be the epiglottis. The epiglottis is a cartilaginous structure that projects superior to the glottis. When we swallow food or fluids, the epiglottis covers the glottis and prevents food and or fluid from getting into our airway. So every time you're choking because something went down the wrong pipe, you could probably blame your epiglottis. Also in the larynx, we will find the vocal cords. The vocal cords are composed of the vocal folds and the vestibular folds. The vocal folds are the true vocal cords because they are involved with the production of sound. And the vestibular folds are the false vocal cords because they do not play a role in sound production. The vocal cords are an important clinical visual when intubating a patient. It is important for clinicians to visualize the glottis and the vocal cords in order to correctly place the intubation tube in the airway and not in the esophagus. When we intubate patients, we want to make sure the air is going into the respiratory system and not into the digestive tract, because the esophagus is directly posterior to the larynx and the trachea. After the air exits the larynx, it will enter the trachea. The trachea contains C-shaped tracheal cartilage rings. Again, the cartilage serves to ensure that the airway stays open. The reason why these rings are C-shaped instead of a full circle is because of the relationship between the trachea and the esophagus. The esophagus is located directly posterior to the trachea, so when we swallow food, the posterior tracheal wall can accommodate the food bolus. Because think about it. If the cartilage rings were actual rings, the food would hit it, get stuck, and potentially kill you. Around vertebral level T5, the trachea branches into the right and left main bronchi, which is where the airway will enter the lungs. The right main bronchus enters the right lung at a steeper angle than the left. So when food or other foreign objects enter the windpipe, it is more likely to get lodged in the right main bronchus than the left bronchus. The main bronchi enter the lungs at the lung hilum. Here we will also see the pulmonary arteries and veins. If we continue to follow the main bronchi down into the lung tissue, we will see it branch into the lobar bronchi. The lobar bronchi then direct the air into individual lobes of the lungs. When the lobar bronchi branch, we will see the segmental bronchi. Each segmental bronchi enters its own bronchopulmonary segment. The right lung has about 10 of these segments and the left lung usually has about nine. It is important to note that the main bronchi have more cartilage than the lobar and segmental bronchi. As we get deeper and deeper into the bronchial tree, the cartilage slowly begins to disappear and is replaced with smooth muscle. If we continue to follow the segmental bronchi until they branch, we will see that each segmental bronchus branches into many bronchioles. If we follow the bronchioles, they will branch into the terminal bronchioles. Each terminal bronchial branches into respiratory bronchioles. The respiratory bronchioles are very thin, and often this is where we first start to see some alveoli and alveolar ducts. The alveolar ducts will then open up into the alveolar sacs, which is where most of the alveoli will be found. Finally, when we see alveoli, we have reached the part of the respiratory system where gas will be exchanged. The thin alveolar cells and the extensive capillary network surrounding each alveolus allows gas to diffuse quickly and easily. Each lung has about 150 million alveoli. That's a whole lot of room to breathe. So the next time you are in a yoga class or even blowing up a balloon, I challenge you to picture the respiratory system. 
Think about the branching patterns that lead us to the deepest parts of the lung tissue and ensure that we continue to breathe while we run, jump, and live our best lives. Thanks for watching. For more educational videos, subscribe to the West Coast University channel below.